Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with another episode of Total Breakdown. Today's battle is from the finals of the Minions of Fortune tournament. This is the third in a best of five with both generals having won one apiece. As a reminder, make sure you check out Clan Community and sign up for their latest tournament in which you can actually win Total War Warhammer 2. It's a long format tourney as well, so time zones don't really matter. Also, just a reminder that in this tournament, players lock in their factions for the duration of it, and they're forced to adapt to each opponent with composition during a set. Grimgore is back on the field leading the Greenskins with Foe Seeker, Stand Your Ground, and Wa. Once again, his Night Goblin Shaman brings Sneaky Steelin, Itchy Nuisance, Gorkle Fixit, and the Scroll of Power, while his Goblin Big Boss is riding in on his Wolf. The rest of the army is relatively consistent to previous battles. Two Goblin Spearmen come in with two units of Savage Orcs to eight Peak Loonies and three units of Savage Orc Biggins. No Black Orcs this time, meaning the line only has Frenzy, Anti-Large, and Poison, but no Armor Piercing capabilities. The Goblin Archers and Rusty Errors make an appearance once more, hoping to cause damage to health and morale and to provide support with Armor Sundering, while the Goblin Wolf Riders continue to provide support with early scouting and the ability to take out ranged support early on. Finally, the Cavalry consists of two units of Forest Goblin Spider Riders and three units of Orc Boar Boy Biggins, hoping to work together to shut down any Empire Cavalry support. The Empire is led by a rather inventive General of the Empire this time around. He flies in with Blood Roar, Foe Seeker, and a Potion of Toughness, while his Light Wizard rides in on horseback with Fa's Protection, Net of a Mintok, Scroll of Shielding, and Arcane Conduit. The army has two units of Reichsguard, the Royal Altdorf Griffites, three units of Outriders, one unit of Outriders with Grenade Launchers, a Great Cannon, and a Steam Tank. Like I said, the General was inventive, but let's see how it all breaks down. Alright, as always, we're going to start with a conversation about deployment, and we're going to keep it paused this time around because the action does start basically right away. Let's start with the Greenskins. Up front you can see we do have the Goblin Wolf Riders as well as the two units of Forest Goblin Spider Riders. These guys are up ahead so that they can get some scouting information nice and early, make sure that the Greenskins are aware of exactly what they're up against. Also, all three of these units are relatively fast, so if things get uh, hectic right away they can pull away almost instantaneously, making sure that they're safe and sound, uh, but having got that information for the Greenskins early on. Meanwhile, you'll see in the woods here, we do have the Rusty Errors, uh, protected from you know large enemy units that might come charging in, and also a pretty good placement there because inevitably the General of the Empire is going to come in for some scouting. And since these guys are hidden and relatively protected from the General of the Empire's large sort of stature, if you will, they're able to get some shots off into the General as he comes pulling in. And as a result of that, he might decide to pull back before he gets a full scout off, or he might decide to push through, take a decent amount of damage, and then pull around, continue to take some damage from the Rusty Errors and these Goblin Archers back here as well as he retreats. Obviously, General of the Empire will most likely have Potion of Toughness, but if you can get him to pop that early on because of that trickle damage from the beginning, that's a great move. Now, the lines themselves are a little awkward right now. I don't know if this was the final deployment as planned. Uh, I think the idea was to switch this up as the scouting maneuvers sort of were completed. But let's take a look at it as it stands right now. On either end, we have the Orc Boar Boy Biggins, and in the center as well, we have these Orc Boar Boy Biggins. And I think that was in response to any potential aggression, early aggression from the Empire, able to sort of push in and intercept and protect these units as necessary, or also come in there to save these guys if their retreats were failed or faltering in any particular way. We do have uh, Grimgore Ironhide in the center here as well, and the Goblins just offset from the center. And there's sort of a sandwich between that front line and the Goblin Archers back here, and then this rear line over here, which consists of the actual infantry. On either flank, we do have the Savage Orcs and the Savage Orc Biggins, so each flank is capable of handling itself against infantry as well as cavalry advances. And in the center, we do have the Eight Peak Loonies. Again, these guys are unbreakable, so I think the plan was to keep these guys back here for now, but push forward as the entire army pushes forward and sort of rearrange the army so that the unbreakable center would prevent uh, the Empire from sort of pushing through and keep you know, range units safe, whatever it might be. Uh, of course, we can't know for sure, but that's uh, that's how it reads to me. Now let's take a look at the Empire's deployment. As I said, the composition was pretty inventive, and so as a result, so too is the deployment. It's pretty uh, hectic looking, but up front we do have these three units of Outriders protected by the Reichsguard back here. The General of the Empire as well, able to dive in and respond to any aggression if necessary. But we do also have the Steam Tank as well as this unit of Reichsguard over here, so the General of the Empire able to protect that pocket as well. The Great Cannon all the way to the side over here. They might seem unprotected, but actually all the way back here, we do have the Royal Altdorf Griffites as well as this unit of Outriders with grenade launchers. So again, able to just sort of snake forward, sneak through the uh, the trees over here and protect the Great Cannon. Alternatively, of course, the Reichsguard can close that gap pretty quickly as can the General of the Empire. So we've got these individual pockets of uh, range capability and they're relatively well protected. And all the way back here, we do have the Light Wizard as well, hoping 
potentially to bait the enemy in and then net them down, keep that card hidden. As long as the enemy doesn't know that there is a light wizard, they won't be expecting the net of a Mintok. Now, with all that said and out of the way, let's get the battle started and take a look at how this all sort of breaks down on the battlefield. Right away, you'll see the Goblin Wolf Riders and the uh, Forest Goblin Spider Riders are being pulled back to keep them safe from these Outriders. Of course, if these guys can close the gap and get some shots off nice and early, they will do a lot of damage. You'll see the Steam Tank as well, able to get some shots off right away. Forest Goblin Spider Rider taking a little bit of damage in the Great Cannon as well, opening shots almost right away, trying to hit these Goblin Wolf Riders and doing a decent amount of damage. Those guys are obviously anti-large, so morale and health dropping for both of those units. And as the Greenskins advance, uh, you'll see the Steam Tank and the Great Cannon are able to pick and choose their targets and make sure they're taking care of high threat units. You'll see over here the Forest Goblin Spider Riders Having seen the Great Cannon over there, slowly tucking forward and trying to get into the woods there. Not a bad call at all. You can shut that down nice and early, but of course you do need to be careful. Uh, it's right next to a bunch of trees, so it could be pretty well protected. And uh, you'll see over here as well the Orc Boar Boy Biggin sort of pushing in to join these Forest Goblin Spider Riders as they decide to pull back, thinking probably the exact same thing. There might be some protection in the woods there. Uh, you know, unbeknownst to them, there is this unit of Royal Alt Dwarf Griffites. They haven't seen them yet, but uh, that's some good, uh, good sense there. I, I think that was just sort of spidey sense tingling. Uh, pun not intended, just realize they are riding spider riders. Now you'll see here the General of the Empire does come in for that scouting maneuver, and at this point the Rusty Errors and the Goblin Archers could have opened shots off and got a decent amount of damage into the General of the Empire. Unfortunately, they were in the middle of a march, I think, and so they were unable to get those shots off right away. And you'll see just getting the information necessary, making sure the Steam Tank and the Great Cannon are able to open shots at the appropriate targets. And you'll see right now the Steam Tank trying to hit these Orc Boar Boy Biggins, doing a decent amount of damage, and that's a good call. The Orc Boar Boy Biggins are probably the most threatening unit to the Steam Tank because the Orc Boar Boy Biggins do have armor piercing and anti-large. Uh, they can get a decent amount of work done to most of the Empire Army, so trying to take care of those units right away is a great call. And you'll see now the entire Greenskin Army is advancing. They're trying to close the gap, and it's going to be difficult. The Outriders are extremely fast. Uh, the Reichsguard are extremely fast. The Steam Tank isn't too fast, but of course it's faster than, you know, your average on-foot units. And you'll see over here these Forest Goblin Spider Riders trying to chase away these Outriders. Meanwhile, everything else is sort of pushing forward towards this Great Cannon during, or this Collective, it seems like. Meanwhile, you'll see here the Outriders opening shots off at these Goblin Wolf Riders. Again, just trying to damage those faster units because those are the ones that can more easily shut down the Outriders. So great target selection there. Over here as well, you'll see the Forest Goblin Spider Rider chasing after these Outriders, making sure they can't get shots off, and then pulling back into the bulk once again. Over here... The Forest Goblin Spider Riders went in to try and hit the Great Cannon, and then they did get to see the Royal Alt Dwarf Griffites, so decided to pull back right away, uh, keep themselves safe, of course, and the Royal Alt Dwarf Griffites don't give chase. There's no real point there. So these guys pull back, and over here as well, the Forest Goblin Spider Riders just giving chase, keeping these Outriders back, making sure they can't open shots off, but of course, these guys are opening fire instead. The Orc Boar Boy Biggins taking a decent amount of damage from that uh, pistol fire, and over here as well, the Savage Orcs now are the next target as they now switch to the Forest Goblin Spider Riders, obviously trying to close the gap, and you'll see Blood Roar does start to take effect on them, reducing their leadership, along with a gunfire reducing their leadership and the damage as well reducing their leadership. It's a very dangerous situation for them to be in. You know, over here you'll see the Great Cannon continues to open shots off, getting a lot of hurt into these Orc Boar Boy Biggins, trying to shut these guys down because, again, they are extremely threatening. And, of course, this clump is a wonderful target for something like a Great Cannon. Uh, you know, a volley of shots in this little clump could damage all of these units, in fact, as the cannon shots don't uh, stop on impact. And... Uh, and so this is really an ideal target. They could have also been firing in this zone over here because that would sort of give them a chance of hurting a bunch of units on the way. But, of course, the Orc Boar Boy Biggins are the high threat unit. And you'll see here the Royal Ultra of Griffites sort of poking forward, trying to keep this area shielded, trying to keep these guys safe. But as this bulk of... Uh, Greenskin units push in, the Royal Altar of Griffites will need to pull back to stay safe. And you'll see that's exactly what happens here. The Royal Altar of Griffites pulling away. This is far too much for them to handle, so all these guys swarm in. The poor uh, Great Cannon folk there, they're going to get completely destroyed as they get surrounded. Now, over here, you'll see the Orc Boar Boy Biggins chasing after the Reichsguard here, and they'll do a decent enough job, especially once uh, some of these guys come in to provide some support. And you'll see the Light Wizard drops the net of a Mintok. Perfect timing there, making sure that the uh, Reichsguard are able to get away safely. So... Good movement there. The Light Wizard now is revealed, so the Greenskins are aware of what's going on over there. I'm not sure what these two casts were, but unfortunately they weren't able to hit anything or affect anything. But this uh, definitely suggests to me that that wasn't a net of a Mintok. Uh, and meanwhile, over here, you'll see these guys turn around now, and they get a charge back into the Orc Boar Boy Biggins. Because, of course, any support that decides to come in towards this engagement now will get trapped, just like those Goblin Wolf Riders did. So, need to be a bit more careful, need to micromanage a little bit more in a situation like this. Meanwhile, over here, you'll see... Maybe a little bit of overcommitment as everything on this right flank of the Greenskins swarms the Great Cannon. The Steam Tank is still left completely free. You'll see it's getting some shots into the Goblin Wolf Riders and the Orc Boar Boy Biggins. 
doing a lot of damage, of course, and you'll see the Orc Warboy Biggins already willing to uh, just sort of surrender. They are wavering very close to routing. Now, it's very important to close the gap on that steam tank. The steam tank has a decent amount of ammunition. It can cause a lot of damage in melee and from range. So it's really important to send in the Orc Warboy Biggins nice and early to shut down the steam tank or send in the goblins, you know, send in uh, some of these savage orcs, anything to prevent it from opening shots off because it can cause a hell of a lot of damage. Back here, you'll see these uh, Forest Goblin Spider Riders chasing those Outriders away. Now, not the worst call. You do want to try and uh, shut down that range support, but this is just overcommitment. These Forest Goblin Spider Riders could have been down here instead, trying to provide support against the Steam Tank. So that's exactly what I mean. While in general, that's a good thought, trying to shut down the Outriders, but when there's a Steam Tank on the field that can cause so much damage to... Uh, all of the units, and there's only a handful of units that can respond, it's very important to try and shut down that steam tank. And you'll see the goblins now diving in there. They do get hit by the Reichsguard, so not able to hold back the steam tank. Meanwhile, the uh, goblin archers back there firing at the outriders as opposed to, again, the steam tank. They can't do too much damage against the steam tank, but trying to scare off these outriders. And over here, you'll see we do have the Orc Poor Boy Biggins broken now, so the Reichsguard are able to disengage. They don't really need to stick around anymore. Meanwhile, over here, you'll see the Royal Altar of Griffites. They pulled away, and they pulled off to some safety here, and these guys just not committing to any aggression aggression anywhere. Not sure where to go. Probably afraid that the Royal Altar of Griffites will come in from the flanks or the rear, so not pushing in anywhere. But again, extremely necessary to send these Orc Boar Boy Biggins into that steam tank. Again, they can cause some damage. They are armor piercing, so bog down the steam tank, cause some damage, uh, you know, pop an itchy nuisance and, and Gork will fix it, keep it in place, and finish it off. The Great Cannon has been taken care of, though, so good movement there. Only got 19 kills before it got completely eviscerated, and now the Forest Goblin Spider Riders chasing after these Outriders again, making sure that they are not able to get shots off. So overall, good thinking there by the Greenskins, trying to shut down that range support, but of course not focusing enough on the Steam Tank. And now the Goblin Archers are firing on the Steam Tank again, not able to do too much damage, but as the rest of these uh, units sort of pull back, nothing else to really target. You'll see the Orc Boar Boar Biggins as well now back to Wavering, but they're largely taken care of. They won't be a threat anymore, and you'll see that the Greenskins aren't really able to uh, decide where to commit. They are broken apart. There are threats all around the field. But uh, again, it's very important to consider and prioritize your threats. You'll see over here, this unit of Forest Goblin Spider Riders and this unit of Orc Boar Boar Biggins being sent in to take care of the Reichsguard over here. Now, the Reichsguard are threatening, sure, but there are other units that can take care of them. Uh, you'll see, though, Itchy Nuisance has been uh, put down here as well to dedicate that negative to melee attack and weapon damage. But uh, in my honest opinion, just not necessary. Too much focus on these Reichsguard right now while that steam tank is able to fire freely. You'll see as well the Royal Altdorf Griffites, though they could have dove in there to try and help and keep these Reichsguard alive, they decided it's much better to not get hit by Itchy Nuisance to stay away as another unit of Orc Boy Biggins does dive in, so that would have been a tough situation for the Royal Altdorf Griffites, so good work there avoiding that engagement. Sometimes it's very important to know which engagements are already lost. And you'll see the Reichsguard are doing a decent amount of damage, they do take care of the Forest Goblin Spider Riders more or less, but of course they are going to be overpowered, uh, especially with the Rusty Arrows opening shots off at them as well, reducing their armor ever so slightly, and they're fully surrounded as well, so they will get destroyed. You know, over here you'll see the Goblin Wolf Riders have been chased around by the Reichsguard, and then the Royal Altar of Griffites come in as well, cause terror, cause fear, and send these guys routing. They're right at the edge of the field, so they will go, and there you have it. That takes care of that unit of Goblin Wolf Riders. And at this point, as this unit of Reichsguard is leaving as well, you'll see the Greenskins are trying to collect themselves. All the way back here, that Forest Goblin Spider Rider unit may have been a lot more helpful in this central situation here, and you'll see right now, the Greenskins are making a good move. They're pushing into the woods. In the trees, in the tree line, in the woods, in the forest, whatever you want to call it, uh, large units aren't going to be as successful in terms of causing damage, so that's one good move. Second good move, these guys are largely hidden, so the range units don't have the ability to target most of these units. Some of them are still visible, but uh, firing at some of these guys through all the trees will waste a lot of ammunition. So, potentially, the General of the Empire does have to be sent in to get some scouting done. And if the General of the Empire decides to do that, the Rusty Arrows are right there, and we also have the Goblin Archers over here. Able to open shots off, Armor Sundering would reduce the General's armor, of course, and then the uh, Goblin Archers would be able to open shots off as well. Sure, the General would get information for everybody else to open shots into, I mean, this, uh, this Reichsguard obviously wouldn't open fire, but uh, when he does that, he would eat a lot of damage. So good placement there, making sure that uh, these guys are largely protected from missile fire, from large engagements, and you'll see there, as the General of the Empire does push in, the Goblin Archers are able to open fire. Now, it would have been better to actually reposition these guys so the so the Rusty Errors, sorry, were further up in this direction because their armor sundering capability can be extremely helpful. And now just sort of staying put, the Greenskins, trying to stay safe. Obviously, they want to win this engagement, and you'll see the scouting allows the Steam Tank to get some shots off, doing a little bit of damage, and concerned that the General of the Empire might land. The Orc Boar Boy Biggins do push forward, but the General does no such thing. Just getting that scouting information done, and you'll see the Greenskins get a little impatient, pushing forward, and now these guys are visible, so they're able to... Uh, 
Well, they're going to eat shots if they stay visible, and you'll see that will start happening relatively soon. The Outriders are pushing forward, and meanwhile, the General of the Empire as well, flying around, just getting all the information, all the positioning information that he might need in order to reposition his own troops and engage them correctly. You'll see here now, the Goblin Archers are eating some fire here, uh, taking a little bit of damage there. More importantly, the morale damage, and the General of the Empire does come diving in, uh, pops Foe Seeker to make sure he can't get stuck in, throws some of these Goblins around, and then immediately tries to go and take to the air as the Steam Tank open shots off at the Orc Boar Boy Biggins. So great movement there, sort of tempting the Orc Boar Boy Biggins out, and they fall... They fell for it. They did try to give chase, and so the Steam Tank was able to get some shots off. And at this point, you'll see the Outriders as well opening shots, the Steam Tank as well getting another shot off. And these Orc Boar Boy Biggins are no longer an issue on the field. They have been taken care of. They're broken now, but even if they were to come back, they're not going to get anything done. The General of the Empire once again dives in, hits some of these Goblin Archers, trying to terrify them off. And you'll see now the Outriders as well able to open shots off at the Eight Peak Loonies. Not the best target because they are, of course, shielded and they're unbreakable, so they're not going to fall apart. Would have been better to maybe target the Forest Goblin Spider Riders. They're <laughs> trying to close that gap. The General of the Empire trying to get away, pulling away from the poison effects of the Forest Goblin Spider Riders. You'll see trying to hit the General of the Empire as well with Gorkle Fix It, slowing him down even further so that the Goblin Big Boss can chase him down and cause a decent amount of hurt. But you'll see the Royal Altar of Griffites now being pulled in to act as a buffer and protect the General of the Empire. And doing a good job of that because you'll see the General is taking a fair amount of damage both to morale and to health. Meanwhile, the Steam Tank, of course, continues to open fire, gets a decent amount of damage in while these Outriders as well, firing on these Orc Boy Boy Biggins, because again, these guys are the high threat unit. They need to be shut down. Ned Vimintuck comes in, and these guys are able to pull back now. You'll see as well the General of the Empire tries to turn around and get away as soon as possible, but of course, all this range fire is coming in, trying to hurt the General of the Empire, try to finish him off so that the leadership penalty maybe sort of swings the battle in favor of the Greenskin. So that range fire continues to come in, but these Outriders now are able to open shots off into the center here. Grimgore is taking a fair amount of damage, stuck in the net, and you'll see these guys dive in, hoping to try and push some of these uh, Royal Ultra of Griff fights away from the Goblin Big Boss. The General is able to dive in as well to try and hit the Goblin Big Boss, and all, as all this support flows in, you'll see the net of a Mintok hitting all of these guys. Right now, obviously, it just lifted, but it's extremely dangerous to do that. You have to be very careful about the net of a Mintok because sometimes you might be able to close the gap just enough so that the net happens when your units are engaged in melee and you can maybe create a buffer for your general or your, uh, your big bosses, but at other times, they'll just get stuck at the periphery and outriders and steam tanks and all the ranged units that the enemy have will be able to respond by opening fire. At this point, though, the uh, Net of Amintok has been lifted, and you'll see most of these guys are still stuck in there. The Goblin Big Boss having a hard time. He is broken, so he wants to get out of there. Grimgor, though, in there, getting tossed around a little bit. Needs to be pulled out of there before he does get destroyed. And you'll see the Rusty Arrows, as well as the Goblin Archers, opening fire of the General of the Empire, who does pop Foe Seeker to get out of there before he gets trapped by this swarm. And the uh, Royal Altar of Griffites, as well, trying to pull out of there, trying to stay safe from all of this mess. And you'll see the Steam Tank still more or less at full health, and that's not a good call at all. And you'll see over here, the Goblin Archers do get charged by the Royal Altar of Griffites doing a decent amount of damage, just trying to take care of them. So, good movement there, trying to make sure that that range support does die out as soon as possible, and you'll see this clump now, all pushing down to try and surround the Royal Altar of Griffites, try to get rid of that high threat unit, but obviously not able to close the gap, unfortunately, because you'll see these guys as well terrified off. So that poison, the potential poison that could have slowed these guys and kept them in place has been terrified off by the mere presence of the Royal Altar of Griffites. And once again, the Greenskin's just not sure what to do. Over here, the General of the Empire just poking and prodding, trying to get Blood Roar in to cause that extra morale damage. You'll see that shot from this team tank, <laughs> throwing these uh, Orc Boar Boy Biggins around, doing a lot of work there, and still having taken next to no damage. It would have been essential to try and shut that steam tank down, but you'll see that simply is just not on the mind of the Greenskins. Trying to chase down the uh, the General of the Empire, I think the plan was to try and cause as much damage as possible across the army to try and get them to route collectively rather than focus on the steam tank, which is difficult to hurt. Fair plan. However, you still need to shut the steam tank down because it will try and get damage through and will consi consistently get damaged through with its ranged fire. And you'll see over here the Goblin Big Boss is willing to fight once again, but needs to be taken well, taken care of. The Outriders are opening shots at the uh, Goblin Big Boss, and you'll see the Steam Tank as well getting a hefty hit in there. So the Goblin Big Boss once again wavering, close to breaking, and so you do need to be very careful about where the Goblin Big Boss or, you know, your uh, your command structure is sitting. Uh, Grimgore over there as well, not safe from Steam Tank fire or from Outrider fire if they decide to come close enough. So you need to be very careful about that. Meanwhile, over here, you'll see the Royal Ultra of Griffites wanting to charge into the Goblin Archers, but of course, these Savage Orc Biggins come in to respond, and so the Royal Ultra of Griffites do pull back. That Goblin Shaman now hidden, but wanting to pull back so that uh, if he does get spotted, he won't get uh, fired upon, he's able to try and stay stalking and hidden. 
And over here again, you'll see the Outriders just slowly picking away at various units. And pick up the speed a little bit here as these guys uh, trade shots back and forth. Uh, you'll see the grenade launchers as well now being used to good effect, trying to hit these uh, the eight peak loonies. Of course, they are unbreakable, so maybe there are better targets on the field, but these guys are completely unhurt, so might as well get some damage in. It would be nice to see some of the grenades go off over here among these Savage Orcs and Savage Orc Biggins. Uh, again, they're a bit more clumped up, so a bit more of that damage could have pulled through. Uh, of course, against the eight peak loonies, it is quite helpful as well, but they will not break under ranged fire. General of the Empire as well, just poking and prodding, trying to look at where he can dive in and engage, for example, into these Orc Boy Biggins. Uh, the Goblin Big Boss back here as well is a pretty viable target, but uh, right now just letting the Outriders do their job. Uh, I think the Greenskins were hoping that the Outriders would run out of ammo relatively soon, but uh, when that ammunition explodes on impact, it's not a good idea to just sit back and take some of those shots. I will say, though, the Outriders that are targeting these Goblins, not the best call because the Goblins do have shields, silver shields, and uh, they will be relatively protected. It would be better off if the Outriders were targeting these Savage Orc Biggins or trying to hit some of these Goblin Archers back here. Meanwhile, you'll see over here, the General of the Empire did decide to dive in, I think, on these Goblins. And as a response, you'll see we have all of these units swarming and taking that opportunity. The General of the Empire is very low on health. He pops the Potion of Toughness, but he doesn't have the Potion of Foolhardiness, so he can be taken out at this point. If he's made to rout, the Potion of Toughness is completely wasted. So in response, the General of the Empire does use Foe Seeker to try and get out of there safely with that speed boost. So you'll see, trying to push away, Gorkle Fix It does go down, slowing him right down, but you'll see right down here, the Reichsguard does push in and prevent that chase. Great play there. Great movement there. The General of the Empire is able to pull back safely with uh, with Foe Seeker and help from the Reichsguard. So it was lovely to see that happen because that was a very dangerous situation for the General of the Empire to be in. But Potion of Toughness now being used to full effect and the General of the Empire now back at about 50% of, of his health. Now back up here you'll see Steam Tank still getting shots off. Trying to target Grimgore now I think as well as some of these Outriders. Trying to get some damage into Grimgore uh, both in terms of physical damage as well as morale. Again, breaking enemy leadership is always a good call. The General of the Empire, again, getting a little adventurous, uh, poking in, trying to see where he can dive in and get some damage done. You'll see the Royal Altar of Griffites just pushing in and pulling out consistently, uh, baiting some shots, but not really committing to anything. Meanwhile, over here, you'll see the uh, General of the Empire is taking a decent amount of damage. So this was probably not the best idea. And at the same time, the uh, Outriders with grenade launchers firing away at some of these clumps while the Goblins over here firing away at these Outriders trying to scare them off. But you'll see the General of the Empire decides to pull down here it's these uh, Goblin Archers, and so of course the Savage Orcs and the uh, Savage Orc Biggins over here need to respond, but unfortunately just a little too slow to respond. General of the Empire pulls down, pulls up, pops Foe Seeker, and is make sure that he's able to get out nice and safe, not letting himself get stuck in or take too much damage as the Steam Tank, you'll see, continues to pop shots off, trying to hit Grimgore over there who manages to dodge that shot, but uh, needs to be pulled back, so rightfully so, being pulled back, trying to be safe, trying not to die because the morale damage at this point would destroy the Greenskins. You'll see, though, the General of the Empire does spot uh, Grimgore back there, so wanting to give chase as he's lying down, taking a little rest there. As Grimgore is coming up, you'll see the General does dive in, causes a lot of morale damage. Net of a Mintok does go down, making sure not only that uh, Grimgore is not able to escape and stay safe, but also make sure that any support that comes in gets netted in before they're able to dive in. So you'll see the Savage Orc Biggins not able to close that gap into the General of the Empire. The Reichsguard able to come in and push them further away so that the General has a clear engagement with uh, Grimgore. The General, though, does decide to pull away. I don't know if that was the best call because, of course, all of these Greenskin units are being kept held back, more or less, by the Net of the Mintok. So, there you'll see the General does decide, actually, it's safe enough to come back again. Tosses Grimgore back, and now it's a little risky because, of course, all of these guys are right there. So, pulls back, pulls away, and flies off. Stays safe. Steam Tank, meanwhile, getting ever so adventurous, pushing further up ahead, getting some shots off now, I think trying to hit... Grimgore still, of course, with the trees there and such a clump of units, Grimgore is relatively safe from steam tank fire, but one hit could probably finish Grimgore off right now. Over here as well, the Forest Goblin Spider Riders sort of pulling back, not really sure the Greenskins what they can do at this point. Uh, even though the Outriders are largely out of ammo at this point, a good melee engagement with the steam tank is impossible as the Orc Boy Biggins that are the only armor-piercing unit on the field from the Greenskins, I believe, at this point. Uh, they're largely taken care of already. Grimgore as well has some armor-piercing capabilities, but if he, if he was to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the uh, Steam Tank, he'd be taken care of in an instant. So let's kick it up a notch again as you see the Steam Tank does dive in, hits the Goblin Big Boss there, tries to toss it around, uh, doing a little bit of hurt there. The Orc Boy Biggins do dive in as well, trying to get some damage in, but the Steam Tank in melee is extremely powerful, just driving through all of these Savage Orc Biggins, not giving a damn, driving through these Savage Orcs as well, giving chase to the Goblin Big Boss, to the Night Goblin Shaman, 
not entirely sure. I think trying to shut down the Goblin Big Boss first. Grimgore, rightfully so, being pulled away, trying to stay safe from the Steam Tank, but Grimgore is largely useless at this point. Any melee engagement would probably finish him off, and you'll see the Steam Tank is giving chase still. Wanting to shut down the Big Boss, uh, but uh, I think it would be much better to chase Grimgore at this point, and deciding the same, chasing after Grimgore, trying to get some damage in, the Outriders opening shots as well. You'll see we do have Foe Seeker and Stand Your Ground go down, the General of the Empire comes in as well, trying to cause as much pain as possible, Blood Roar as well, reducing morale in this area, and Grimgore you'll see eating a lot of damage. Foe Seeker is completely useless when he's on the ground, Stand Your Ground helping his melee defense of course, as well as leadership, with the Steam Tank relentless in its pursuit, trying to drive over Grimgore, trying to completely destroy him and destroy the morale of the Greenskins around. You'll see doing a lot of damage to the units as Grimgore tries to pull back, but good management here, making sure that the Steam Tank does give chase, gets a shot off at Grimgore, reducing his morale and health to next to nil, and you'll see Scroll of Shielding does go down, increasing the damage resistance of the uh, Steam Tank there, so good play there, and you'll see once again chasing after Grimgore, trying to finish him off, and uh, though Grimgore does decide to route, that's clearly not enough as the Steam Tank drives over Grimgore Ironhide, completely shattering most of the uh, the Greenskins' will to fight. And that was great play there. You'll see the Steam Tank was very well protected. Scroll of Shielding did go down even when the Steam Tank was surrounded. And now, though, you'll see the Steam Tank, having done its duty, is getting surrounded and is taking a decent amount of damage. The fire from the Rusty Errors causing armor sundering as that massive explosion goes off with the Outriders popping their grenade launchers and, and scaring these uh, Savage Orcs and Savage Orc Biggins off. Uh, but you'll see the Steam Tank there taking a decent amount of damage. And now chasing into this unit of Savage Orc Biggins still under fire from the uh, from the Rusty Errors. So you really have to wonder that if uh, if the Greenskins had focused down on the Steam Tank earlier on, if, uh, if the situation would have been extremely different. You'll see at this point, not really worried about sending the Outriders in for some melee engagements. The General of the Empire, a little risky pushing him in there, but again, I think just a little overconfident potentially, but rightfully so. You'll see the Greenskins start to shatter almost instantaneously, and uh, in just a moment, we will have a close defeat for the Greenskins. The Greenskins were in a very tough situation here. The Empire Army was almost certainly taking them by surprise, and it was going to be a tough one to shut down. Unfortunately, they let the Steam Tank have reign over the battlefield, allowing it to pick its targets at almost all times. In a situation like this one, it's essential to have the Steam Tank bogged down in melee with fodder troops if you're not able to take it out through armor-piercing damage of your own. At times, the Greenskins had the right idea, hiding in the woods, trying to kill the General of the Empire to cause morale damage, trying to single out cavalry, but with the Steam Tank able to fire till it was out of ammunition and then dive into melee with full health, the Greenskins stood little chance with almost all of its armor-piercing capabilities already driven off the field. As always, guys, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more Total War content and keep sending in those battle replays. I think it's one of the best ways to learn and it's great to highlight such tactical play from the community. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield.